This next one is T. You need to be tactical. Tactical, what I'm talking about here. We all know the SWOT chart, okay? It's, it's something that's been around a while. It's very helpful. Don't get me wrong. It's very helpful. I love it. However, we know about that. We know about the SWOT chart. And when you have the SWOT, you need to understand what is your internal strengths and weaknesses. What are your external opportunities and threats? The positive, negative. Look at each one of these. But I want you to understand one thing. I want you to walk away from this chart is this. When you're looking at the SWOT chart, yes, look at your strengths. Look at your opportunity, threats, and weaknesses. However, I want you to understand that in the areas of your weaknesses, don't rely so much in that area. I mean, don't put so much time into that area. If you're weak in a certain area, yes, yeah, so you may get other trainers that come in and say, oh, yeah, work on my weakness. No, work on your strengths. Your weakness is going to be there. Try to improve on them. Try to work on them as you can, but really stay in your strength zone because that strength zone is going to take you to where you need to go, okay? Anywhere there's opportunities and threats, of course, you need to address those. But that strength zone is going to get you where you need to go. See, so be clear on which areas you're strong in. Discover the way to capitalize on those areas that you're strong in and strengthen and shore up your weaknesses, but always keep your eye out for opportunities, all right? So that's what I want you to get from being tactical. Be very tactical about it. Now, this is another methodology that a lot of people talk about quite often. However, I want to add another element to it, okay? I believe in the smart, you know, being smart, okay? Look at specific, measurable, achievable, relevant, and time sensitive. I understand that. I, a lot of people work with it. I work with it myself. However, I believe in it, but there's some more that needs to be done. In fact, before I even tell you what more needs to be done, I want to ask this question really quickly. How many of you, you could use, you can put it in a chat, you can put it in your chat or you can you know, do a thumbs up emoji, whatever you need to do. How many of you use the smart chart methodology? Let me see. How many? Anybody? Nobody? Okay, we have one person, two, three. Okay. Anybody else? Mary, I can't see that. So how, what, what are they saying? They use it or not? Uh, well, Lori uses it sometimes. John uses it regularly. Uh, okay. Sherry doesn't use it at all or hasn't used it at all. All right. Yeah. So, well, let me go a little. Thank you, Sherry, for telling me that. And thank you, John and Lori, too, as well. So when we talk about it, it's, it's something great to use. Uh, it's been around for many years. The methodology has been around for many years. And, and it does help, Okay. Uh, as John said, he uses it a lot. So when you're specific about how you want to do things, you state what you want to do, how you want to take action to get there. And then you're measurable, meaning you measure what, what would it take me to get there? What is the amount of time? You really look at the metrics involved in order to get there. And then you have to make sure your goals are achievable. Make sure they're achievable, meaning you can do it. Don't set something, don't set something so far out there that you can't achieve it because it's not a smart goal, okay? And then you look at something that's relevant, meaning it makes sense within your job, makes sense within your life, makes sense within your business, okay? And then time bound, state when you want to get it done. Be specific on the time frame. If it's, don't just say, I want to get it done in spring. No, what date in the spring do you want to get it done? Because now you're working towards something that's achievable, that's time bound, that you know you have to put things in place, measurable items in place in order to make it there, okay? Now, the key is this. Somebody mentioned, and I don't know if it, was, it wasn't John. I don't know if it was Lori. Or I, I don't know if it was, I think it was Lori who said it. Use it sometimes. Sometimes people may use a smart goal uh, technique and methodology sometimes. However, the way to make it more instrumental in your career, in your life, in your business, is begin to execute real time. Make it a smarter goal. Because when you use it sometimes, that's how you fall off. When you use it on a continuous basis, real time, that's how you stay consistent within your SMART goals. So use it, execute on it real time. That's how you make your goals smarter. 
That's what I do. I don't just have goals out there and I do it sometimes and I may not like it. No, I execute real time, meaning I have it written down. I have measurable items I want to meet. I make sure that they're achievable items so I can make sure it get done. And they have to be relevant that makes sense within my organization, within my business, and are time sensitive or time bound, as it says here. Okay. Uh, Randolph uh, is asking, uh, what metrics can you use for uh, the um, R? Oh, for the R, make sure you're relevant. When you look at the R, you have to understand that is this something that falls within my business, my, my achievable goals? If it's something like, say, this year, you want to uh, forecast, you want to make 300K, okay? Does that make sense within your job? Do you see yourself really reaching that milestone within your job? What things are you doing in order to get 300K? I'm talking about a business at this point. Are you marketing more? Are you reaching out to a different audience? You know, what are those things that are relevant and how are you going to make sure you're going to do these things in order to reach that milestone you want to reach? Is it a different audience you're looking at? Okay, different customers. So you have to be very clear on how to get there in order to reach the milestone you want to meet and make it measurable in order to get there. Anybody else? Um, Kevin, um, Renee is Renee is asking if you can just give a quick example, a simple example of how to sort of visualize a smart tactic. Oh, good one, good one. Okay, what, oh, let's put it this way. I'm gonna use one very simple, okay? Very simplistic. I'm going to, uh, me, myself, I mean, can I use my own example, me personally? Right now, I'm in the process of losing. I know it sounds like a lot, ladies and gentlemen. You better get me back on here in about eight months. But I'm in the process of losing 75 pounds. Okay, I'm very specific about what I'm going to lose. I'm gonna measure it by weighing myself on a a weekly basis, but I but on a monthly basis when I'm on tally. Is it achievable? Yes. Why know why it's achievable? Because I've done it before. I've done certain things. Is it relevant? Does it make sense? It makes sense because of my health. And is it time bound? Yes, I have a certain date I want to reach it by because that's that's the date I want to get there. Am I executing real time? Exactly. I get up in the morning and I work out on my elliptical or I walk. I have my strength training. I mean, it's right here. I got, it, I got all my stuff in my gym. So the bottom line is all these things are real. It's a smart goal. 75 pounds, reason for me, because I've done it before. Now, the achievable comes in because I've done it before, I gained it back. So what am I going to do a little differently? I'm not going to wear myself out by going to the gym twice a day. You know, that's what I did before and I hurt myself. So that's how I gained the weight back. But now I'm better. So now I'm just going to, you know, take my time and I'm being achievable about it by, by you know, being more wise about what I'm doing. I work out once a day. I do a little cardio here. You know, it helps out. So that's one quick high level way of executing that SMART goal. 